I don't keep up. But I you, mostly <laughs> Andrew and I uh, appreciate that you guys listen and for the boxing writers to steal from us. We'd like to get credit one day, but hey, you can't ask for everything. And for those of you who think we're joking, we're not joking. It's Andrew's newest thing in life to send me links of, they stole the title even. <laughs> so there was boxing last night. Uh, I did watch it. Uh, and we'll start with Robert Easter, who wins a close split decision over Javier Fortuna, who, in my opinion, just basically got jobbed. I, I'm okay. For those of you who don't know, the scorecards were basically 114, 113, one way or the other. And then there was one judge who was smoking crack and saw it decisively for Robert Easter. He basically saw it where Robert Easter won every single round. You know... That was the scorecards, dude. That's, yeah, that's not a good scorecard if that's how, he, how he's seen that Okay, fight. the final scorecards were two judges, 114, 113, and one judge had it 115, 112. Okay, so when you go 114, 113, 114, 113, where you're like in that weird space... Yeah, that's an argument. But then 115, 112, what the hell? You got to remember, though, Lee, there was um, the point deduction. Point deduction. Right. So it would have been a majority draw. Draw. Yes, sir. If he yes, sir. didn't lose the point. Uh, and for two, what I thought was funniest about the fight uh, was, was it Easter who was in Fortuna's face after the fight telling him to be professional? about taking the lost. <laughs> so yes, Fortuna they, needs a translator. For if those of you who didn't see it, it'll be shown on Showtime like 600 times this week. I'm not saying to watch the fight because the fight is shit on a stick. Okay? It is... Anything Robert Easter does is the dullest piece of dog crap ever. I has he had an exciting fight? You know, Lee... It, he got a little exposed last night as a one-dimensional fighter. You know, they've talked about him uh, fighting to his opponent's height oh, by bending over, bullshit. giving up. You've seen a lot of that still last night. Um, another thing I didn't like is the jab right hand came way too often. It, it was almost as Fontura knew. No, he wasn't scared of the jab, right? He, he takes the jab. Ducks the right and then returns with two power shots. Counters with either a right hook, left hand, or vice versa. Over and over, this played out. He would uh, Easter would get him to the ropes, do a jab right hand to get on the inside, and then get countered with two shots. Pantora would either tie up or, or exit. He's winning these exchanges, Lee. I, I kept seeing it over and over. I don't know why the trainer of, of Easter did not tell him to stop throwing the jab right hand to get on the you got to mix it up lee you have to mix it up you cannot be one dimensional when you get to this elite level of boxing right because you so will be exposed he's fighting a guy for those of you who don't know let's let's really set the stage here robert easter is a gargantuan he's like six foot he's like my height he's like six one but you know he cuts to this ridiculously tiny ass weight and he looks like a dude who's either smoking crack or a professional boxer one or the other. And Fortuna, at his tallest, what is he, 5'5", five, 5'6"? Five, five, yeah. So, yeah, of course, small. his game plan is going to be to try to get on the inside and to try to hold. And so what does ultimately Easter's comments after the fight? It was a tough fight. He's a former world champion with reason, um, but it was really difficult to fight him, right? For uh, Easter would go on to say, uh, I knew he was going to run once he felt my power. He just wanted to grab and hold the whole fight. Didn't Oops. run. He, he did didn't out. run at all. He, he wanted he to get inside run. and bust the dude up. Yeah. And that's why and the fans were upset. Fortuna brought the fight to Easter. One thing I got, this is the reason why I'm okay with the decision. And, and this is what I was thinking as soon as the bell rang that was on Easter's side. He missed, Fontura missed weight, Lee. He missed the weight, so you get a, you get a red flag right there. And then when you look at when the referee takes that point away, I believe it's either round two or three. It's very early in this fight that he takes the point away, and I, I really think because he even rubbed me wrong. I, I'm dead. See, I didn't. I wasn't impressed with Javier Fontura in the first four rounds of this fight, Lee. Uh, he he's um he's cheating. Right, he already cheated on the scale. Then he comes in and he's throwing rabbit punches and being really wild and and 
he was trying to get Easter out of his game plan, and maybe he did. Maybe that was Fontura's game plan the whole way. Uh, good job if it, if that's what he was planning to do. Um, but I, but I think the judges got whatever judge had the one fifteen one twelve. He might have been given Easter points just on the fact that the guy was professional out of the ring and in the ring because never once did Easter really respond what they fell when he was just being mauled in the first few rounds by this by the challenger Fontura. Yeah, I completely agree. Which, that, yeah, go ahead. That, go ahead. I wouldn't rematch this fight. Um, Robert Easter, look, he was calling out all the champions, Linares, Garcia. We got to talk about Garcia because, and I know that's in the news, but we got to tie these two in because they're the same division. These guys were supposed to fight. This is what I mean, Lee, by sometimes this boxing whisperer, Al Heyman, that everyone proclaims is the smartest thing in the sport. He misses the timing of his fights all the time. Yes, he gets his guys. I don't know paid. what's up. Who makes the matches for PBC? It's Al Heyman. He, it's he's everyone the matchmaker. Always, everyone always says that, right? He's uh, the this, one is, that... this is a horrible horrible match that was a horrible match made now i get i get the idea behind it but it's a hor. it was a horrible he was mikey garcia could have fought miguel cotto they said no for whatever reason right miguel cotto gets beaten by saddam ali then they should have fought robert easter undefeated ibf champ you're unifying the lightweights the guy is looks like Freaking Tommy Hearns, Paul Williams when he's walking in the ring. I mean, what what a matchup that could have been for Garcia on paper for all of his fans. They say no, and both of these guys lose their next fight. Garcia's opponent, Lee, he's out. They, they postponed the fight until March. Yeah. Lipnitz, Sergey Lipnitz, hurt hand. Lip shit. Get it right. Come on, Lee. Come, Come on, on like, what is Garcia doing? What, like, who makes these calls? Well, considering that the PBC also controls the WB, it's the WBA and the WBC belt. So you could easily get the unification, but it's obvious they're just spreading it. Well, whatever. Why get it? Why get into it? <sighs> not, not, not a good look if you're Team Garcia this morning. Not only did your hand-picked, cherry-picked-ass opponent get hurt, the two guys you were kind of uh, nervous on signing, oh, I need to get more money, right? That's what you're proclaiming. They don't make enough. You yeah. could have had time. You could have been the unified lightweight champion this morning yeah. or the junior, what was it, the welterweight champion. You well, choose. The welterweight, yeah. I'll choose the 5'6", Sergey Lipnitz. <laughs> Lipschitz. Terrible. Terrible at matchmaking. I'm Main dead event serious. of the evening last night. Uh, I call for the for those of you who don't know, it was Lamont Meet Peterson who was growing his beard out so that people thought he was the other Peterson. He was not. Um, Fizzled out. That's that's really funny. He did grow his beard out, and I swear to God, he was a dead ringer for Adrian Peterson. Uh, Errol Spence drops Lamont Peterson. I don't know why the crowd found it so exciting, but. Um, so Andrew and I basically watched the fights at the same time. And my first comment when, for those of you who don't know, uh, he stops Peterson. I think the, it was a technical stop based on the eye, correct? Wasn't the corner. Um, no, I think Barry Hunter stopped that fight. They might say it's a cut Lee, but on tape, you clearly see Barry Hunter. Oh going, yeah, That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. No more. Yeah. They, it is the, the doctor. Uh, here it is. Uh, Barry Hunter, Peterson's trainer, asked for a referee uh, to stop the fight. Okay, there we go. That's yeah. the official. Yeah. So Good I had ball. said this, and I actually didn't send it to you, but after the first round of fighting, when I saw that Lamont was not fighting at all, first thing I typed to Andrew was, another guy dropping weight to get paid. And then I was sitting there thinking, watching the second round, this guy's going to quit on his stool. He's going to quit on his stool. And then, remarkably, in the third or fourth round, something bit him in the ass, and he actually fought for one round. And I'm guessing that was the PBC quietly whispering in his corner, hey, make it look good. Because he only fought for one round. That, and when he did, he was impressive against Spence. For those of you who don't know, 
Errol Spence is the real deal, but he's a kid that's been brought up within the system, right? He's 23-0. and He's got an undefeated record. He's a former Olympian. He's literally one of the best prospects that the PBC has because of his lineage. If he was a top-ranked guy, God only knows what they would do for this kid. But they... If, if PBC was actually behind him two years ago when he fought Danny Garcia to that majority decision defeat, Right. Um, who knows where Peterson would be right, right now. Remember, this kid was hot when he got into the PBC. He had one loss to the Matisse, Lucas Matisse, but he was still a very good contender. Uh, he had the um, um, Kendall Holt and um, Amir Khan victories going into that Matisse fight. So Peterson was relevant. Peterson was he, relevant, and I can get, understand it. He's got a name. It makes sense. Um, for Spence... It's a good. And they def- robbed him. It's a look. It's a good defense for Spence. At the end of the day, he's. It's his first defense after destroying. And make no mistakes, he destroyed Brooks. Kel Brooks looked like he was not in the right place at all uh, in his fight, and he caught him. Pa- that's the only reason why I give Spence a pass on this fight. I, mean, I this do is, give. Look, it's his first defense. He's just. He got paid, and here's the bigger thing. They sold out Barclay again. Like, I don't know what it is about PBC Magic. Where did you hear that at? Did you? I I saw the crowd. I don't know if they had to go out on the street to Times Square to go fill it. But that was a full crowd, man. Yeah, I don't don't know if it was sold out, though. But it might have been the lower bowl. But remarkably, after the fight, at least Peterson came to his senses. Most of the time when it's sold out, Lee, they were going to pump that all over the internet. You know what I it's mean? It's going to be That's, a big crowd. I'm going to tell yeah. you it's above 10,000. Yeah, that would be nice. That's a nice turnout. Um, I don't know if they're going to get – if they get a million viewers and a 10,000 turnout. I'll tell you what. That's the pocket for Robert PBC. Easter had a, sure, had a lot of fans in that building. I don't know if you've seen in that first fight. the sheer but, volume of – well, here's the thing. For those of you who don't know and you just live in a boxing bubble – the sheer volume of fighting sports last night was off the chain, right? In the forum in Los Angeles, you had Bellator starting that heavyweight tournament. In Boston, you had the UFC putting on that big giant Cameroon beast, Nagu, taking on Stipe uh, Miasic uh, in the main event there, which everybody really wanted to see. And then PBC's got the balls to run... I'll give him a pass. It's, it's a, not even the balls. Wait, Don't say if that. I, you if I was say gonna, the MMA has the balls. Uh, well, okay. But look, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give this evening a 7. It's a C. I, look, if somebody turned this in as a report, hey, I put together a fight, and here are the fights, and here's how it turned out. All right, I'll give you a C. I mean, it's passable. It wasn't. I don't feel like I wasted my time, which with most PBC cards, I feel like I'm wasting my time. Uh, I thought the Spence fight was kind of a bore, Lee. That that was a you know I, what, you know what you was know interesting. I I I'll tell you why it was interesting. Is when they said these two are good friends and yeah, yeah, partners. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, don't get caught oh, up in that bullshit. What I was interested by was how does Spence, right, a kid, look against somebody? Who, Peterson didn't fight, but the one round he fought in. I'm telling you that one round where Peterson actually decided to come out and throw punches, that made a difference, and people are going to look at that one round. Uh, no, I want to retire. I, I get, I get, I get that Peterson's retired. Peterson, I'm not here to pump up Peterson. I'm yeah, here to not. try to like Spence is in the division, right? Welterweight is the money division, is it not? Lee, he has one fight in two years going into last night. He is done. He showed up for a check. All right. No, this no, no, no. He dropped weight and got paid. No, no. Don't shot. don't get me wrong. He right. dropped weight to get paid. I, I'm tired of the fucking internet. Whoa, whoa. Oh, I think you know some of you guys that call yourself experts putting out there that this is going to be a closer fight than all of you expect, trying to act like you're calling something, like you're so inside. You know when a guy who fought once in three years is going to go head-to-head with the guy we're calling the future of this sport. How foolish do you sound today? You know, Lee, you know when I stopped doing that? I told you Mayweather made me stop doing this. The Mayweather era, do you know how many fights I had to pull out of my ass 
to sell to people to try to get them to watch Floyd versus Buck.